Well, a happy Easter to all. A few years ago, a friend of my family's, uh, Anna Flanagan, woman in Pittsburgh, went to make arrangements for her husband's wake, and she discovered that the local funeral home was being renovated, so they suggested that she have her wake in their fancy suburban facility run by the same funeral director. When one of the Irish neighbor ladies arrived at the wake and looked around and saw the luxurious furnishing and decor, she went right up to the widow and she said, was you fighting with Paul when he died? She obviously thought that the fancy wake was a result of Irish guilt. In the Gospels, we see that Jesus, in fact, had no wake at all. There was a great rush to bury him before the Sabbath began on Friday night. I'm sure that the apostles experienced great feelings of guilt because they were not there to give Jesus a proper burial. Jesus' body was not thrown into the common ditch because there was a man by the name of Joseph of Arimathea who boldly went to Pilate and asked for permission to bury Jesus. Joseph of Arimathea buried Jesus in his own grave. The Lord had no problem being buried in a borrowed grave because he had no intention of using it for very long. Today we stand before the empty tomb, a tomb that was borrowed from Joseph of Arimathea. Jesus was born in a stable because there was no room in the inn. He tells us that the birds of the airs have their nest, the foxes have their dens, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Not even in death does Jesus have a tomb of his own. But today we rejoice because that borrowed tomb is empty. Today's gospel describes for us what happens on Easter morning. It's a virtual marathon. Mary Magdalene scurried off to the tomb before dawn. Then she runs back to find Peter and the apostles. Then Peter and John race back to the tomb. The fact that the tomb is empty energizes everyone in the gospel. And that's only the beginning because after discovering that the tomb is empty for 40 days, there are apparitions of the risen Lord who returns as the good shepherd to gather the scatter. And he assures us that he will always be with us. He will be present now in all times, in all places, where two or three are gathered in his name, where the sacraments are celebrated, where the gospel is preached. We have a saying, seeing is believing. But for most of us, it's really the other way around. As we believe in the risen Christ, we begin to see him active in our lives, helping us, comforting us, guiding us. As we believe in the risen Lord, we begin to see him in others. My faith in the resurrection gives me great comfort in knowing that I am never alone, that Christ is always with me. And my faith in the risen Christ makes me more willing to spend time in prayer. The resurrection is not just a belief that we pull out at Easter or some comforting doctrine that we console ourselves with at the time of a death. It's a whole way of life, a life that begins with our baptism and is sustained by our gathering in faith with the risen Christ on this, the day of his resurrection, Sunday, the first day of the week. It's a way of life in which we try to keep ourselves aware of his presence in all that we say and do throughout the week. Today, we're reminded of the truth that is the most basic one to our faith. And today, we rededicate ourselves to living that faith in union with our risen Lord so that we can be witnesses to the world that Christ is not to be sought among the dead. The tomb is empty. He is alive. His love is real.